First off, I would like to thank my loyal subscribers for calling me out on an error. Helophobia is considered a real phobia and has actual scientific names called Hadophobia, after Hades. Also, Digiophobia. However, Helophobia makes me think of this gentleman, therefore it's funny. Psychology defines learning as any permanent relative change in behavior. This is exactly what your parents, teachers, and instructors are trying to do to you, be it how you think or how you act. Classical conditioning is the term that showed Pavlov's studies. Classical conditioning uses stimulus to produce involuntary responses. He, of course, being a scientist after discovering classical conditioning, wanted to know if the bell would continue to cause the salivation response even if he no longer rung the bell or no longer gave food when the bell rang. His studies showed that yes, when stimulus or reward were removed over a period of time, the stimulus response would be unlearned on average proportional to the amount of time that the stimulus and reward were applied. When there was little to no response to the stimuli, this was called extinction. Extinction is a bit of a misnomer as learning is a permanent change in behavior and if the reward and stimulus resumed, the response would quickly pick back up. However, sometimes on occasion, even after years after extinction, a response to a stimuli could temporarily return out of nowhere, sort of a flashback. It is probably a natural response that the brain uses to test the waters and see if perhaps, through trial and error, a response might work again. In terms of hatophobia, many are able to move away from familiar surroundings and the people they grew up with who condition their emotional response with fear. They can then remake themselves somewhere else and work on decline and extinction to hate a phobia. When they go back to their old familiar surroundings though, their emotional responses can resurrect and create a very surreal response when the old self and the current self collide. It may take a bit of time after the visit to work through the new hybrid you and allow to take on those old memories on your own terms. Teens tend not to have this luxury yet when suffering from hatophobia, so even when they 100% logically are atheists, their emotions are still very fundamentalist Christian, constantly making them nervous about their doubt. Going off to college will help out a lot if you can. Besides classical conditioning, the other psychology branch of learning is called operant behavior. Operant behavior is the voluntary behavior learned to operate in the world. An example of this is a guy on blog TV recently mentioned that his Christian siblings shouldn't have made fun of him as a child for being so gullible. Classical conditioning, as well as other inherent factors, cause a child to naturally trust and have blind faith. They've learned subconsciously that more often than not, older people know more than they do about just about everything. Part of siblinghood is to pick on and tease your siblings. Being gullible is something to be laughed at and shunned. When the child finally learns the mechanisms to overcome his or her gullibility, the child soon realizes that gullibility and blind faith have an awful lot in common. Giving up one usually means giving up the other to some extent. Giving up blind faith and not trusting many people is part of operant behavior. The child learned to go against their natural instincts at a young age and consciously disbelieve. At this point, no amount of hellfire talk will phase the child because everything said by an adult is now taken with a grain of salt. A new skeptic is born. Temporarily, the person will probably be a bitter cynic as well. Operant conditioning's goal is to increase the rate of an already occurring voluntary response. When a dog or child does something good, you give them praise or a treat. When they do something bad, you withhold the reward or you give them a spanking. Reinforcements must be immediate and must be linked to the action, otherwise the reinforcement is pointless. If a child is too young or the animal is mentally incapable of linking the reinforcement with the action, then it's more of a confusion than an effect. Many times parents or pet owners will make claims that the child or pet knows what they did. Anthropomorphism has a powerful impact on these assumptions. A child may not know how to express themselves or they may be wanting attention and do something bad just to get attention. This confusion or fear of being punished when they have no way of understanding why they are being punished can produce stress that can slow their developing brain to take more time before they actually can learn why they're being punished. Same is kind of true about hell. None of it makes sense why we're being punished. We just kind of go along with it. 
Well, this subject took a lot more time than I expected, so there is now yet another video I have to do before I can go over overcoming phobias. Stay tuned.